I have been using Blender now for quite some while of whiles, and in the process of making the animations and the various other forms of content visible on this channel, I've also gone through the process of trying to optimize the software for my own uses. This has come in the form of creating my own set of layouts for Blender's workspaces, and also comes in the form of making my own theme, my own color scheme, visible here. In my opinion, and of course you have to decide for yourself which you prefer, this blue and gold cutter scheme is much more attractive than the default grey theme that Blender comes with. It's also, again at least in my opinion, more attractive and more easier to read and to work with than many of the other default themes that Blender comes with. I've intentionally designed it to try and look clean and simple, to have the various elements stand out from one another and to be obvious when one is activated or another is selected, and to still have this sense of professional quality, especially in terms of the consistency of the color scheming and the ability for you to differentiate between when something is selected, highlighted or inactive. Keeping a consistent color scheme across the width and breadth of this piece of software. Going back to the changes I've made to the layouts, you see in the original there are many different layouts, each created for a specific part of Blender. You've got here the modeling section, mapping, animation, sculpting and texturing, rendering, all the other defaults. I had problems with this. I personally wanted to consolidate all of my workflows into one location, or at least a smaller collection of locations than this. I also wanted to make use of the fact that I have two monitors available to me. This itself is a benefit of the layout I have created, in that Blender's layouts are only designed to work with a single monitor. Inside of the layout that I have created for Blender, I have tried to pack all of the functionality into these four workspaces. And this fifth one, which attempts to put everything into one singular window for when a second monitor is not available. The one I use most often is this animation window. It has a large viewport in the center, which is sized roughly to be the same dimensions as a 16 by nine camera, and has room along the side for the various properties that you might want to animate. There's also a second board down the bottom here so that you can access the properties of an object down in the corner and also access its transformation properties or materials, whatever else you want to change, in this upper part here, while still making room for collections. Along the bottom you have the dope sheet and the timeline, but the idea for these isn't that they should be pulled up to be viewable unless you really require it. The idea of these is simply so you can access the NLA track currently active in one space and remove it or push it down, stash it, whatever other operation you need. And also to view and change your current frame in this part here. Also toggling auto keying and the render range active. Meanwhile on the left side in the secondary monitor you have a secondary window which has been made with the idea of viewing the camera in mind. It has the grid disabled, it has bones disabled, so you can get a cinematic view of your scene while still retaining a more detailed look at your scene in the main window. To its side you have the NLA tracks. This can of course be dragged out to the side if you need it larger. And is coupled with the graph editor. As you know, pressing Ctrl and Tab, switch is the graph editor for a dope sheet if you require that. And this setup here, along with the window here, is all you really need to get along with animation. Of course, that's not all you require, so these two windows here can simply be dragged up at any time. And now you have access to the shade editor and also the UV editor. So let's say you're working on the side here, on the main page and you notice an object which is textured incorrectly. All you have to do on the secondary page is grab the edge of the window here and drag it up. 
and now you more or less have access to the functionality of the sculpting and texturing page of this window and the UV editing page of this window, both in the same place that you animate from. Alongside of that, you have the windows bearing a more specific requirement. The intention being that you can drag them out to the side, of course, but it's easy to just control spacebar and maximize them. In the bottom right corner, you have the driver editor. So again, you can access it on the fly in the process of animating on the main window. And as well as the driver editor, you have the text editor. And if you need it, you can drag it out just large enough that you can paste in whatever scripts you need and run them from the corner and still access a secondary cinematic viewport, an LOA editor, the graph editor, and as I say, instantly access the UV editor and the shader editor. All of this instantly available to be accessed alongside what you see on this side, all together in this one workspace. Now at the times when this doesn't do it for you, although personally I spend more than 90% of my time in Blender in this one singular workspace, but the others, if you do require them, you have the modeling page, which breaks the screen up into four, as well as giving you a larger workspace on the secondary monitor, also giving you access to the full amount of space a scene collection can have on the side, so you can easily view your entire scene. Again, being grouped with two object property panels that you can access as before. There's also a window more specifically made for editing materials because sometimes you might need more space when working on a more complex node tree. Also coming with the shader editor and the image editor available to be previewed. Also giving you a small space to a small space here to interact with whatever properties you might need. Since the secondary window is taking up is taken up fully with a viewport. Since the secondary intention of this material workspace is also to operate as a sculpting space. So if you need to sculpt, you can just jump from this one to this one. Do you have here a full page window where you can do just that? The final window to mention is the rendering window, which just as the material workspace combines the sculpting, texture painting and UV editing pages together. The rendering workspace combines the rendering and compositing workspaces into the same place. In the main window here, you have a simple area that allows you to preview your render as normal. Along the bottom is a small area for previewing which frame of animation you are currently on. And on the right here, this is the fairly important part for this page, you have in one box the render properties and in a second box the object property, the output properties, which means you can, from this one page, access straight away settings like motion blur, screen space, color management, as well as your resolutions and the quality of your outputs and output locations without having to search around in the various windows. On the secondary page, although personally I rarely use this page, you can access the compositing nodes, as well as the video sequencer containing a sequencer and a preview, should you require it. In the corner we have a small viewport, so that as you're going through the timeline here, you can see in the bottom right corner of your second monitor what's going on in your 3D environment. Practically all I use is this one workspace here, since this gives me all the functionality I've really needed for the vast majority of my time, all in this one location, on these two monitors. The others are just a bonus that I'm keeping in, because, well, they're useful at times. For instance, sometimes when you're doing a more complex animation, the modeling viewports 
the modeling workspace is superior since you get this front top and side view accessible instantly. Let's just take a moment to show you how you can implement them yourself. So first of all the color scheme, the simplest part. First you want to go to Edit, Preferences, Themes and click on Install. Then you can go and find the plugin you've downloaded, find the one labeled Inlet Theme, drag it in, drop it, select it and Beauty instantly occurs giving every page a full makeover. And to change the default theme, all you have to do is go again to the project files you've downloaded, click on Startup, and it'll open up with the workspaces that you've seen so far. To keep this so that all new projects open with this layout, you can simply go to File, Defaults, and click Save Startup File. This will now keep this as the default layout for your Blender project. If you do this process and it doesn't open up with this custom layout, you need to go to Edit, Preferences, go down to Save and Load, and check that Load UI is unticked. unticked. With these steps completed, and a save startup file operation performed. Every time you open up a new project of Blender, it'll bear the luxurious sights of blue and gold and the intricate simplicity of the layouts you have been so far shown. That's all from me for now. Good luck with your endeavors, wherever they might take you.